One day, back in high school, this was around 1997 for reference, I was talking with a PC enthusiast friend of mine at lunchtime. I was frustrated with the performance of my Cyrix 6x86 and wondered if adding one of these new and exciting 3DFX voodoo cards to it would help speed things up at all. <laughs> my friend's response has been burned into my head for the last 25 years. Why bother? The CPU isn't fast enough to see any benefit. You'd get the same frame rates on a Verge. Ouch. Fast forward to today, and while I don't have a 6x86 on hand, I do have a Cyrix, and I do have a Voodoo. So let's see if my friend was right. Welcome to Tech Ambrosia. First of all, I know, putting a 3D accelerator of this caliber into a system with a weak CPU isn't going to be magic. There is a performance ceiling in this system, and adding a card as overpowered as a Voodoo 3 will absolutely find it, and fast. However, I don't think it'll be zero benefit if only for the fact that this particular system is running at 266 MHz. It makes it roughly equivalent in performance to a classic Pentium running at half the clock speed. Finally, I want to apologize for the low number of tested games in this video. I didn't find out about GPU June until I watched Pixel Pipe's video for the month, and not the, not the announcement video, thanks algorithm, but his entry video, and even then it took me another couple of days to come up with something interesting for the topic. Throw in multiple Windows 95 reinstalls, vintage GPU driver complications, and tracking down game patches from long dead FTP servers, and well, June is just about over. But it's not done yet. With all that out of the way, let's get to the good part and talk about the games. My go-to game for early Windows 3D gaming is Forsaken. Released in spring of 1998, Forsaken is at its best and brightest during its 12-player multiplayer deathmatch battles. Weapons are unique and colorful, with a clear progression from basic orbital laser all the way up to the death-dealing Titan missile. In this test, I'm using the Forsaken demo and fraps to compile frame rate information. The demo playback itself is of a multiplayer deathmatch, and includes some large and dramatic firefights that stress both the CPU and the GPU. Forsaken requires a 3D accelerator, but it's a DirectX 5 game and will run on something as simple as my S3 Verge, which is in fact my baseline for this test. I have to run the game at 320 by 200 in order for the Verge to turn in a usable frame rate, but immediately the card's lack of alpha blending support becomes an even more obvious flaw than the low frame rate. Have a look. Let's flip over to the Voodoo 3 then. This card defaults to 640x480, and I chose to leave it there for this test even though maxing it out at 800x600 has little detrimental impact on the performance with a 3D accelerator as overpowered as this. Powerpoint. You can see immediately that frame rates are improved, and indeed, looking at the graph data, average frame rate has increased by 9 frames per second, and peak frame rate has doubled, with the little Cyrix able to hit 60 frames per second in some areas. So with this, we can see that adding a Voodoo to the Cyrix has not only increased visual fidelity, <laughs> hey look, alpha blending, but also increased frame rates. This alone seems to bust the myth, however, that performance ceiling I mentioned earlier is immediately apparent in those minimum frame rate numbers. Let's step backwards in time a year and see what the little Cyrix can do with what might be considered the single most difficult to run hardware accelerated Windows 95 game for retro PC enthusiasts. Pod. Planet of Death. The notorious Ubisoft title from 1997 that proudly proclaimed it was accelerated by Intel's brand new MMX technology. Surprisingly, this game, which is known for being difficult to run on era-appropriate hardware, runs perfectly fine on the Cyrix Media GXM, thanks to its robust MMX implementation. Surprisingly also, it has native support for my S3 Verge. 
However, this goes about as well as you'd imagine. Have a look. While this isn't a brilliant showing for a hardware-accelerated 3D game, this is about how well the Tomb Raider S3 port runs on a Verge. This was considered acceptable 3D performance uh, on the PC before 3DFX came along. It's playable, but only barely. Now I'm sure you're wondering how the Voodoo 3 does with this game. Well, out of the box, it doesn't. The original release of Pod linked against the original Voodoo Graphics Glide Libraries, meaning it won't run on any 3DFX card but an original Voodoo 1. Ubi released Pod in 1997, however, in 98, after a myriad of patches to the game, they did publish a 3DFX patch, which patched the game to use the newer Glide 2 API. These libraries were included with the massively popular Voodoo 2 accelerators that released that year, and 3DFX has subsequently included them for backwards compatibility with all Voodoo cards released afterwards, including this Voodoo 3. This patch alone can solve compatibility problems for a lot of people, but in my case, running the patched game gave me a GRSST win open error. This was something I found out after some digging is a pretty common issue with Voodoo 3 users. However, all was not lost. An industrious hacker named Nico Bendlin created and published PodHacks in 2014. PodHacks is a configurable hook DLL that fixes nearly all of the game's lingering bugs and issues, including GRSST Win Open. This collection of hacks saved my butt and allowed me to experience Pod in all of its late 90s glory. I'll leave a link below where you can find pod hacks in case you're also looking to run pod on vintage hardware, or even in DOSBox with a glide wrapper. So, about my experience with pod. My family's computer at the time uh, of this game's release was a Cyrix 6x86L with no MMX support, and while I had a, an S3 Verge at the time, it had half the VRAM that this one does, making it even less useful. So my only real option at the time was to download the demo and play it in software rendering mode with no MMX acceleration. And, um, it was a slideshow. Fast forward to this little Cyrix today, and it is very much not a slideshow. Welcome to Pod on a Voodoo 3.
Permit me to get misty-eyed for a moment, but this is one of those magical events in retro computing. I'm finally able to play a game I've known about for my whole life and never been able to play properly. Yet, here it is. Not only playable, but playable in its ultimate form, with full 3D acceleration, smooth performance, and on period-appropriate hardware. This is retro PC magic right here. Also, look at that frame rate. This doesn't just run on this machine, it runs well, it flies. This is enjoyable. This is pretty much the best result I could have asked for when putting a Voodoo in my Cyrix. This is fantastic, just look at this. But from that high, that amazing victory, we have to come down a bit, because the popular games in 1997 and 1998 were not Pod and Forsaken. They were Quake and Quake 2. Especially Quake World and Quake 2's popular Capture the Flag mods. Especially a little-known mod you might have heard of, Team Fortress. These were the games I was pouring my free time into in 97 and 98, and I have some bad news. They don't run great on the Cyrix. As has been covered on other channels, non-Intel processors, and Cyrix's processors especially, perform uniquely badly in Quake and Quake 2, owing to John Carmack's extensive optimization of those engines for the Pentium and Pentium 2 processors. And even adding a, even adding a Voodoo card to my little Cyrix doesn't change that fact. Performance improves, but not by a lot. Have a look. Here in Quake, we're greeted with a pretty smooth stock frame rate of about 30 FPS average, and adding the Voodoo card increases that to 35 FPS. However, areas with more complicated geometry reveal the same weakness we saw with Forsaken. Minimum frame rates, minimum frame rates stay low, even with acceleration. GL Quake on a Cyrix on a Voodoo doesn't yield transformative results, but it is better, so I'll take that. Lastly, let's have a look at Quake 2. Quake 2 in software render mode is a familiar sight to me. I played a lot of Q2CTF back in the day, and thanks to my Verge not supporting OpenGL and also not being good, software rendering was what I used. Turning on the power of the Voodoo enables that sweet, sweet colored lighting and yields a boost in performance to almost 16 FPS from 12. We're also able to crank the resolution up to 800 by 600, which was a veritable luxury at the time. The performance delta from Quake 1 makes sense. As games get newer, they get harder to run, and frame rates go down if the hardware doesn't change. This trend continues with Quake 3, which, yes, the Cyrix will run, but it's not pretty. So, does it make sense to put a Voodoo in a Cyrix? Sure. It makes as much sense as putting one in a fast 486 or an early Pentium, and those are builds I see all the time. The advantage of using this CPU in a retro PC today is that it provides very genuine mid-90s system performance while also offering modern amenities and being incredibly convenient to build. But I'll get into that in a future video, so subscribe if you haven't already. That's it for this video. Hopefully you've enjoyed this thoroughly ridiculous look at combining one of the 90s most iconic GPUs with one of its most infamous CPUs. If you did, I've got a whole playlist of retro computing tech videos for you to enjoy called Jumper Block. Thank you for watching Tech Ambrosia. Have a good night.